Welcome, everybody, for coming here tonight with this Thoughtful Thursday edition. We're going to be speaking on the topic of hormones. Um, for anybody who's been here before, I'm glad you're back because this is another one of those great experiences because you might learn something new and exciting. Um, we always do love to bring people in and get them talking about their health uh, and their own particular health issues, and that way we can see wellness be given to others as well. Uh, during their process of healing, and that's one of those nice um, pieces, I guess, that that uh, that help allow us to know we're all part of this together. Um, no one really is quote unquote suffering by themselves. Everybody, there's at least somebody else um, out there who's going through issues. But the idea is to come together like this uh, and learn some more about what we can do to start helping that begin to heal. Uh, there is always something you can do. Keep that in mind. Even if you feel stuck at the moment that there's really nothing that can be done, uh, then the idea is try very hard to imagine um, what, you know, for yourself might be the next step. Uh, could be getting another person, could be looking at your own behaviors and habits. Um, as we go through the hormones discussion, uh, it really trumps a lot of people because you can't technically see them. You can see the results of them, but it's very tough because it's really hard to control and maintain. And, and unless you're getting blood tests daily, really, uh, hormones are very variable. So it's hard to sort of guess and gauge what you're doing is having an effect, not having an effect. Um, and we'll go over some ways of actually trying to understand uh, seeing hormone health improve for an individual over time and what they can start to look for for themselves. So... As we like to always begin our lectures here and our classes, I'd love for everybody to get themselves ready to do our conscious breathing exercise to start the event. Um, the way we do this for everybody who's not been here or joining, uh, we actually take a very elongated inhalation, seven seconds if we can, of breathing air in, really opening up the bottom part of the diaphragm using the belly to actually expand out as much as possible, and then really shoving everything down, really tightening the diaphragm back in, almost to the point where you kind of can't breathe anymore, and then that lets you take in the next breath, seven seconds in, eight seconds out, and we'll do that twice, and then just open space for 30 seconds. Uh, let me see if I can do something. Hey, Mike? Is there a way that we could, uh, sorry, Michael, um, uh, cut the fridge? Because yeah. that's, I, I can hear it. I don't know if I can hear it more because of the headphones or what. Thank you, sir. Wow, it's amazing how much difference that makes. I felt like I was screaming. I'm like, I can't, I can't keep talking louder. Um, so, perfect. Um, yeah, I will. Uh, so, seven seconds of breath in. Everybody, let's begin. And eight seconds of breath out. All the way down. Seven seconds of breath in. And eight seconds of breath out. Thank you very much for joining me in that one minute of bliss. Um, who knows what a hormone is? The second part of the worksheet talks about the idea of listing five for the group activity today. Most everybody that's been here a couple times, I think we've been talking about a few. So who's got um, one that they can just kind of name off for themselves that they know a lot about? Estrogen? Well, that you know about. Estrogen was one. Say that. Testosterone. Testosterone, perfect. Two. Let's get a couple more. Progesterone, okay, there's three. Endorphins, that's a family and class of, of, of uh, style of uh, hormones, yeah. Come on, any others? No? Michael, you grabbing any from your side? Uh, 
uh, pituitary gland. Yep, does a lot uh, does a lot of different ones. Uh, so human growth hormone. That's a good one. You'll take that one. Okay, fantastic. Um, insulin is another great one for a lot of people to keep in mind. It's a hormone. Everyone always thinks of it as just doing sugars, but it does so much more. We have serotonin, which is our happy chemical. Dopamine, which is our euphoric chemical. We have melatonin, which is our sleeping hormone. We have all of the thyroid stimulating hormones. There's actually about four or five of those. Um, we have everything from the uh, pregnolone. Uh, we mentioned progesterone. Um, again, hormones actually are what we are when it comes to the motion of our bodies. Um, it's unique because we give so much credit to blood, but blood's just the transport system. That's like saying, technically, that the highway is what makes a city. It's a part of it. It's the way that things move around, but it's the cars and the packages and the things that are going through the blood system that actually gets it to do something. Um, without hormones, we would technically be in one state and we would never vary. That's kind of interesting because people who say that, then one of I find the biggest issues about pharmaceuticals is you get one particular level of hormone and it never varies. You take your pill, that's all you get, and that's usually the problem. It's because if I would sit here and do something that would cause you to laugh, you would release a different style of hormone. If I would tell you a sad story, you would feel a different hormone. Everything is actually in that control. And it's a language that we actually get to experience because we've all understood or at least know about pheromones as well, too. So there are all of those categories of volatile compounds that we actually put off in order to tell people how we're feeling, what's going on with us. Um, so it's a language of itself. It's the language of the body because it's what tells each little piece how and what to do in so many different ways in different areas. And it's funny because hormone health is really a sidebar when it comes to human health. Uh, we think more in the idea of nutrients, and that's really what we a lot of times sort of focus on in these classes is nutrient health. Um, macronutrients, proteins, carbohydrates, sugars, fats, uh, micronutrients, when we talk about things like vitamin C and vitamin E and all these tiny little guys uh, that are inside the foods that we actually are eating. And very rarely do we understand why we go through such a trouble in terms of controlling all of these inputs because they are what are creating the actual outputs on the inside. So it's very important to understand that that's what we mean when it comes to eating for health and nutritionally healing is that you're controlling the hormones. Um, so it's very you know, interesting to me uh, that we actually go through uh, these processes on the order of about 10 to the 14th power per second. So you've got about 50 trillion cells, um, so you've got that many operations occurring per second in your actual body. So per day times that by 300 or 3,600, your body is moving all the time. And it's hormones that are doing the moving uh, because they are the signals that actually make us create this operation. So to tonight's visual display, who wants to hold the bucket? Okay, you get to hold the bucket. Who wants to hold the volleyball? It's got to be really one of you two because you're the easiest to access. <laughs> So the way that this is <laughs> the way that this actual system operates, represented by the bucket, the idea is hormones have a place to go. They need to find that place in order for them to work. The cell is actually completely covered by receptor sites, buckets that actually are perfectly fitted for the actual hormone that's meant to go there. And so the unique thing, just like exits on a freeway, each one of these locations allows the hormone, which is our volleyball, to go into the receptor site. So, you want me to do so we can put the volleyball in the receptor site. Aha. So let's say that what we saw here was that Gay was giving you serotonin. So the unique thing is, is the receptor site was open, and therefore serotonin actually <laughs> says serotonin's happy. So oh, now okay. you should be, well, everything's great. Um, the unique thing is that you see this operation, this is occurrence. Now, I'm going to do something that actually might 
anger a lot of individuals. Let's give gave the volleyball back. And let's take five pounds of whey. This is what an SSRI does to a hormone receptor, and this is what an antidepressant is doing. If you try to put the volleyball back in the bucket, it doesn't go in the bucket. It means the serotonin has not been allowed to be uptake by the body cell. What this does is it creates a flood of serotonin in the bloodstream, which for a moment keeps you happy. For a long time, kind of causes a lot of problems. And that's where when we start to understand, this is just one example, talking about SSRIs. So this is things like Ativan. This is things like serotonin uptake reinhibitor. So, ser yeah, so selective re uh, serotonin reuptake inhibitors. Um, this could be, um, let's think of it this way before we go through this whole concept. So the bucket's now a thyroid cell. And here's another way of understanding hormone disruption. The volleyball being iodine, critical nutrient for thyroid operation. But what happens is, is chlorine has become inside the actual cell that is the receptor site for the iodine, which happens very common because we shower in water that's chlorinated. So when we go to try to put the volleyball in, it doesn't work. Now the essential nutrient iodine isn't doing its job, so the cell can't continue to create the function that we're looking for. So this can be something that's ha that, that cre is created by medicines. This could be something that's created by toxins. Um, in a lot of people, even we see that what happens every so often is that even viruses, molds, bacteria can change sometimes. Now, we have a round ball, and it goes inside the round bucket very easy. What's unique is, is that sometimes what happens for a lot of people, and this is just to keep you thinking on what's occurring here, is that now we can give gay the square bucket, same molecule, same hormone. Even though that kind of goes in there, it probably isn't going to stay. Square bucket doesn't work. Each receptor site's different. Each hormone is different. And they have to pair and match specifically with each other. And so that's where a lot of people, uh, if you're a person who's type 1 diabetic, all of your receptor site cells for activating insulin production aren't active. They don't work. So you never produce your own insulin. If you're a person who's gotten type 2 diabetic, the problem is, is that your insulin cells have become overworked and that no longer they've become deformed and they're, they're now not operating properly. So you can see how square bucket could turn into a round or back and forth, vice versa. And this is what we see in terms of hormone malfunctional hormone disruption occurring. So I want people to always come away with practical knowledge. Like I say, thank you for participating and helping me out uh, because I think that's really what makes this system start to actually make sense and be very, very uh, informative because you can actually take it home with you and say, aha, I get to realize and rationalize this is what's occurring. Um, because we're stuck in sort of this whole process of not really understanding our bodies. So I really want people to know exactly how things are happening um, and to understand that, again, this process, this is how health really happens. Um, and that's why the title of this, when the, you know, it's the hormones that are doing it. Um, we mentioned pituitary gland with HGH the way your tissues actually regenerate themselves and cells know to actually kill themselves off and not become cancerous and go back to being good, healthy, brand new cells. Um, when people are concerned about wrinkles and, you know, and the idea they don't understand, that's a hormone loss. That's the elastin hormones and the collagen producers that are actually being dissipated out of the cells and the ability to regenerate the cells with good uh, levels of HGH aren't there anymore. Um, so the cells aren't, you know, so the, the skin starts to look pitted and folded and, and broken down. Um, whereas before, when you have tons of these great chemicals, these great hormones in your body, everything seems to work out very effectively. So it's unique because we're talking about the hormones themselves. These are the little packages. Um, but it's also very critical to come away from a talk like this to understand what it means to have organ and glandular health for keeping your actual hormones in production proper. 
Um, so it's unique because the actual three pages to the back of the handout today talk a lot about the glands. So everybody here, um, we kind of talked about a couple of them. So we have a pancreas. The pancreas is responsible for producing a few other hormones, but mostly insulin. Um, insulin's critical, as we all know, for blood sugar regulation. But it's also a very essential nutrient for the ability to actually just allow for cells to be produced and multiplied inside your body. So when you start having insulin resistiveness or your body doesn't recognize insulin anymore, then your cells stop actually reproducing as quickly as they need to. Um, just as much as paired with lack of HGH and testosterone, we don't see cells being fully matured and being able to be fully healthy. They're staying around too long, which creates the issues for them actually starting to multiply into abnormal cells, and they actually are not moving fast enough um, through the process of maturing. And so we end up seeing that there's so much more involved in this. Uh, so again, insulin levels, when it comes to a lot of people who are diabetic, are very rarely checked, even though what's funny is that sugar pill, quote-unquote, that you're taking, metformin has insulin in it that's not made by your own body. And that's where it's unique because the receptor sites, again, when they get filled by the volleyball in that bucket and there's no room for any of the other ones, it doesn't matter how hard your pancreas is working, that receptor site is blocked. And now the, the actual manufactured hormone has gone inside and taken the place of it. Where that's the some of the issue we start to see is that your body can't a lot of time uh, distinguish between exogenous or outside produced hormones and endogenous or inside your body produced hormones. So when it comes to the glands, you know we did talk about the yes or no, let's see, that was what, two days ago. Um, we did talk a lot about the idea during uh, one of the other talks about thyroid health. Um, that it's actually always transmitting information on how to tell certain organelles to keep working. Um, again, your brain has a lot of glands that secrete a lot of different styles of hormone. The pituitary gland, the amygdala, the hippocampus, all of these areas excrete hormone and they actually tell the thyroid what they want the rest of the body to actually produce and, and to take away from the foodstuffs that you're eating. So that's where when what you're taking into the body is so critical, it needs to be able to feed back to and give the nutrients that are necessary to keep the brain healthy. So that way it can be producing the right hormones in the right concentrations in order to start to see the body start to work. But the most important gland, not gland, organ, when it comes to the idea of actually being healthy is the gut. Because 86% of all of the actual hormones that your body produces are produced inside the gut. And this begins in the stomach and goes all the way through down to the actual lower part of the intestines. So that's where the manufacturing process of actually putting together the components of your hormones is so critically needed in order for them to actually do their job. So when you're eating something like camu camu berry, um, it's unique because it's actually giving you some of the components that you actually need, like tryptophan, in order to develop a compound called 5-HTP, which your body eventually converts into serotonin. So it's unique because that process is all in the gut. So if you're a person suffering from IBS, any sort of inflammation in the stomach, lack of digestion, low stomach acid, bad pH in your body and you're not digesting things fully, that's where the chain of reaction probably started for you to have a hormone issue was somewhere in the intestines. Uh, when you have bad bacteria inside the body not producing the right types of byproducts from food, then you have a disruption in the ability to create the right hormones that your body can start to see. So truthfully, if you can focus on the gut and get the gut health to start to improve, then you can actually see improvements in all areas of the body, let alone, most importantly, the, I would say, the actual hormone system. So that's why we love things like Baobab, which is a prebiotic, or getting people to start taking very high quality probiotic, um, and getting things like HCL, digestive enzymes, because when you start to have the right bacteria, then you can start producing the right byproducts from your food. Um, I know in our talk that we did uh, regarding metabolism, um, everybody says, oh yeah, the body runs on sugar. No, it doesn't. You break sugar down very quickly and you can produce ATP from it, but you don't actually run on sugar. That's not the way your body works. 
Um, and that's one of those unique misrepresentations to where if we could understand that that's not the case, then all of a sudden we go, oh, wait a minute. So good bacteria means good hormones. Hey, that's the right level of thinking because when you can see that overall change in the colon, then all of a sudden everything else starts to work better for the body as well too. Always be able to understand that I talk um, pretty much you know, from the way that I think and I talk fast, so I apologize. If anybody has a question, always just let me know. And I know, Mike, you're on the line, but you can just say, hey, you know, speak up real quick and just let me know if there's something that, um, that I'm saying that you want to, uh, to go further into. Yeah, that's hard. Now I don't use that. What is it in it? So Baobab, no, no, there is some vitamin C to it though, but the idea is it would never replace camo camo for me because there's just such a high concentration of the vitamin C. It's a prebiotic. What it actually has is the fibers, and for somebody who's on a no sugar diet, um, this is the actual material that feeds the bacteria inside your body properly for them to be able to multiply and produce and have an overall better digestive system. Um, so when it comes to the hormone functioning, uh, again, having a conversation this last weekend um, with a very interesting doctor from uh, the Dr. O'Hara's uh, uh, probiotic company, um, he, they've now synthesized and been able to isolate um, a very unique bacterium that's actually in the lactobacillus family that uh, will produce glutathione for your own body, um, which is one of the hardest chemicals when it comes to being depleted to actually get the levels back up in the body. And glutathione is your master antioxidant. It's the one you produce without ever needing to eat any other fruits or any other vegetables or anything like that for antioxidants. It's the one you produce on your own if you have the right material. And he thinks that this bacterium is actually one of the keys that's missing in our general pasteurized diet that's not being able to be affected. That these bacterium are very, very subtle and very uh, necessary for glutathione production because they actually will take in components from your food and spit out glutathione for your body to uptake and absorb and use in other ways. Um, as well as SOD, which is again superoxidase dimutase, another very interesting functioning micronutrient um, that works as a very high, high level antioxidant. Um, that's very essential, and it's why we love things like chaga mushroom, which is rich in SOD by itself. Um, again, there must be something unique about the birch tree producing xylitol sugar and the chaga mushroom eating that sugar to produce superoxidase dimutase. So here we come to understand that now he's found a bacterium, maybe it flourishes inside the chaga, that actually produces this superoxidase dimutase. So it's very unique. Again, low sugar diet. There can be some benefits to looking at prebiotics as the way to promote your natural probiotics to allow for the overall best chemicals being produced by your body. Um, Again, it's amazing because the way the baobab uh, tree works and how these fruit pods are, they um, are very functional for keeping your overall gut flora func working over the starvation period. And that's the way the Africans, uh, whenever they have the African tree of life there, this is what they would survive on um, in order to keep them from not allowing full intestinal di die off during the actual starvation periods. Um, so there's not much nutrient in it. It's not that you could eat it like Moringa forever and actually get proteins and all these other great compounds. Um, but for a saving grace, while you're actually not able to eat other foods, this will at least keep your bacteria healthy, which means you'll stay healthy. Um, so that's a fantastic way of understanding how things are operating inside your body. Um, I always love the way that really healing and health um, come from people I'm exposed to. Uh, in their own issues. So let me know if there is any of these that actually ring well with you in terms of something that you'd like to hear more on because that's I think the best way to kind of go through the process of, of feeling this this sort of situation. Um, but it is to me the ones I want to focus on tonight um, are the thyroid stimulating hormone um, TSH because it's so controversially used in diagnostics for thyroid issues and then a lot of times given uh, medications for in order to solve quote unquote a hormone problem. Um, and yet the way that they do this is either by giving you desiccated thyroid of other animals, uh, which is like armor, uh, or synthroid, 
um, and that's supposed to help you have the actual thyroid stimulating hormone in your blood, which make the test results look fantastic, but your actual health depleting. So that's one of the unique things is we have to understand. Um, when you take material from outside of your body to try to heal, it's very rare that you ever actually get the hormone to start producing itself at a better rate. Um, because the body is a sensing organism, whenever it feels like there is presence of those particular hormones, it stops production. And that's the unique thing for a lot of people. And you'll ask a lot of individuals, they'll feel great when they first start taking some type of thyroid hormone. And then what will happen is a few years down the road, all of a sudden their ability to produce it drops off completely. And then they have to go on to higher and higher dosing material. And then they have to usually do hormone replacement therapies, which means you're completely reliant on the actual byproducts from something else, putting, getting them onto the body. So again, it's unique because with TSH, um, so often is it tested as the diagnostics, but very rarely is the liver. And the actual functional part of the understanding for thyroid health is in the liver because it's the liver that does the conversion process. So the thyroid senses the blood, puts out thyroid stimulating hormone, a few other different hormones that work inside the process. The liver receives that part in the blood, converts and actually tells the body more T3, more free T3, more T4, or more free T4 back and forth and keeps this balance occurring. So the thyroid's producing, the liver's converting. And when those two stop talking very well together by something maybe sometimes no more than the idea of you having just a little bit of a subluxation in your cervical vertebrae can shut down the, th the actual signal that goes to the thyroid gland, then all of a sudden the test results look as if your thyroid's not functioning, um, that there's something wrong in the way your body's working. So they'll attack the thyroid thinking that that's the problem when a lot of times it's the liver or it could be the spine. Um, again, it's very unique when it comes to holistic healing, how we have to take into account the entire system, the whole body, the whole history of the person to understand how to get through to a problem. So that's a big piece in this understanding. So I know we gave the example of kind of seeing how the, the hormone was able to move into the actual uh, bucket and be able to do its job and create a function on the inside of the cell. And then usually the cell will actually produce a compound, another hormone that will go up and actually push that particular hormone out of the bucket. And then it, that relationship is how the body actually works in terms of its sensing. And we talked about the idea that you can use medications to interrupt the overall function, but then we gave the example of the idea that toxins can actually come in and be something that creates disruption. So for the thyroid stimulating hormone issue, a lot of times we mention chloride, fluoride, and bromide as being the three compounds that selectively compete with iodine in order to actually get themselves into your body and allow for you to block the overall reception. And again, when you kind of understand the way that this works, if you ever look at the periodic table of elements, it's because that iodide, fluoride, chloride, bromide are all right in the same family, just different overall covalent structures of the same grouping. And that allows for them, they're called holofluoranes, to be similarly toxic to the body. Your body can't use chloride for anything good. Um, it's cleansing. Um, it does work good for cleaning toilet bowls, but it is horrible to have into the thyroid gland. Same thing with fluorine, um, fluoride. Fluoride sounds like a great thing because your doctor talks all about using it on your teeth to, you know, to actually help the enamels. I know people, again, native cultures who've never seen a dentist chair in their entire lives, and yet for some reason they have beautiful pearly white teeth with thick enamels and have never sucked on any sort of fluoride toothpaste or anything in their life. Um, it's not a fluoride issue. Uh, it's usually other things inside the body. Bromide's another thing that essentially is now put in bread. So that's where bread a lot of times will create conditions of actually destroying people's thyroids because the more bromine you actually take in bromide, the less you can take in and uptake um, the actual iodide. Um, so iodine is one of the more critical health nutrients to actually start getting your, into your body for regulating the TSH. Uh, and one of the funkiest things that I think that I hear more often than not when it comes to healing is, yes, you start taking iodine, it will mess with your thyroid levels. You know why? Because now your thyroid's working. That's the same thing like saying that I love a quiet lawnmower. It does so well inside the house. Yeah, but if you turn it on, 
You don't want it inside anymore. So the thing is, is when you're kind of understanding the operation there, of course it's going to cause variable numbers. It's not allowing the blood to start to be receiving the same level. It's going back to function, not just being a decoration. And that's very important when it comes to health and healing. Uh, I heard a great little phrase today uh, that literally said, um, if you are looking for change, expect to become uncomfortable. And I, I mean, it's one of those important pieces in this process because so many people kind of get happy and they get comfortable where they are. So that first little step that they want to make, it feels weird. But the difference is, is that that one step over onto this side, all of a sudden their body starts working so much more effectively for them and they can actually be in control of their health. Um, so it is interesting because with talking about the idea of thyroid stimulating hormone and toxins getting in the body. Um, we need to look at things uh, like detoxify, um, citrus modified pectin, zeolite, chlorella, uh, as being ways of actually getting those compounds out of the body, excreted into something and bound. And we do a whole lecture on nothing but detoxification uh, in the binding sense uh, to where you can actually be flushing these compounds out of your body and making way for actually getting more iodine back inside the system and allowing that to heal. Um, again, HGH to me, it's called the anti-aging hormone. Uh, it's unique because we always think that we have to age. It's just a belief. It's not true. You don't have to. You really don't. Um, it's just tough because that's what our parents told us. That's what our grandparents told us. That's what their generations before that. We see pictures of people 100 years ago. We think, well, they got old. Everybody else must get old too. Um, with enough HGH, technically your cells themselves will keep their operations at their highest potential. And the term. Correct. Again, exogenous hormones are not something that we promote, and that's something we don't like. There is some place for it in medicine, but the idea of HGH production is the fact that you have a fully functional pituitary gland. And to do that, you need adequate sulfur. You need to actually start balancing your, your body's pH. You need to get that colon working because you're not going to see synthesis of the actual material inside the gut very effectively. Um, so I'm not saying go out and be chewing a bunch of HGH gummies for the rest of your life because that's not where you're supposed to get HGH your body will produce more of it for yourself. But you've got to get your brain system, all of the glands that are involved in that process, functional and doing their job effectively before you can see the changes inside your body. Um, again, there's a part to this where we see the five essentials really playing a role in helping each of these individual pieces start to do their job. Um, and if nothing else, the idea is to really take some time uh, and focus on one particular aspect in in your life. I mean, there's a lot of people who look 20 to 30 years younger, quote unquote, that they should be at the age that they are. And if you would probably go back and check their blood system and see what they're doing and how things are working, it's probably got something to do with their HGH levels. Um, again, human growth hormone is something that really does help um, our cells know that it's the right time to reproduce and when to turn off and actually become uh, a mature cell and die. And so apoptosis actually doesn't happen very effectively unless we see good HGH levels as well too. So it's a part of the, the critical part of that process. So when there's not enough HGH, cells feel like they have to stay and linger around for a long time because there's not going to be one to replace them. Um, so imagine being the person who's in charge of guarding the front door of this building and I'm going to tell you that for the next three weeks no one's going to relieve you. Well, how do you stay awake 24 hours a day for three weeks in order to actually make that happen? That's that same panic that each individual cell in your body goes, eh, not enough vitamin D, not enough HGH, I'll just stick around until I you know, know that it's actually okay to not go somewhere and then you have an abnormal cell inside your body. So it's unique how these connections keep going through the overall patterns and lifestyle for really helping us um, understand the way for, you know, for us to feel. Um, it's unique too because HGH is something that we actually see occur in cycles. Um, we have a tremendous amount of it until we mature in terms of our skeleton. Uh, then we actually drop for about four or five years. And then we have a tremendous amount of it, again, kick up 
to where we're in quote unquote our production years and we're actually doing more reproduction, um, then we see it drop again. And if you're unhealthy, that second drop, a lot of times you never recover. Um, because the body has so many other things it's trying to balance in terms of keeping you healthy that it will actually let HGH not be produced very effectively. Um, and it is one of those key critical pieces on especially I think HGH. Um, acid alkaline profile is very critical for making sure that you actually have those proper hormones. All hormones in general, but I think very specifically HGH um, because it's a very, very a uh, sensitive molecule that's produced in just that pituitary gland and not many other places. Um, it's unique because we also have to understand that when we gain weight, a lot of times this is connected to actually having not enough of certain hormones because our fat cells can try to be the synthesized locations of hormones that we're not being able to produce in the glands that they're supposed to be produced in. Um, it doesn't do it a very good job, so it needs a lot of it in order for it to actually work. Um, so when you lose your thyroid gland, not only is your metabolism now shut down and you no longer have the control system for what's going on in between your head and between your visceral organs, but you're also now trying to replace all of the hormone that was produced by the thyroid in some other location. Um, so it's your body's way of trying to save you, trying to help you. Uh, you've just gone through something traumatic and you've lost, from what most doctors feel like, a non-essential organ, and yet it's one of the most essential. Um, so insulin's an interesting one as well too, mainly because I don't know what the number was that I think I read before I came over here today, but one in three, I think we're at one in three people are diabetic, according to the doctors. I know. So one in three. Um, so that means there's, what, six, seven people in this room? Technically speaking, two of us are diabetic. Um, uh, so not me, not, me. not yeah, no, no, everybody else, no, a little bit. Um, now this also goes for the fact that doctors say that diabetic is anything above a 100 blood sugar at any time of the day, which is improper. Yeah. Wholly and fully not looking at the biological unit for what it's supposed to do. Um, eat a cookie. It's going to go up. Eat a celery stick. It's going to go up. It's not going to go up much with the celery compared to the cookie, but it's still going to go up. You have solute and sugars in your – the reason plants live is they take sun and water and they make glucose. That's how they live. So when you chew on what's considered technically a not sweet vegetable, you are still getting glucose in your bloodstream. So it's very unique to me that this one piece, this one chemical, this one hormone, insulin, is literally the place that I think most doctors start intervening into people's lives on a routine basis when it's absolutely unnecessary. And that's where it's amazing for people to go home out of this lecture here, and if they're catching this on the actual recording, if somebody tells you, I am diabetic, you go, okay, I just heard this guy. He said, and this is, this is the way it goes, the functional definition for diabetic is a blood sugar volume greater than 170 for longer than seven days. So that means it never comes back down. So, and again, true diabetics, their blood sugar can be anywhere between 200, 500. I've seen people at 1,000. I've, I've heard of a couple people in the 1,500s. Um, it just it'll never come back for, and that's one of those where it's toxic when it gets to that level. I love some of the analogies you use with the uh -huh. examples you give. Uh -huh. Is there one that you have that would describe at the high sugar level? Right. How that detrimental to the body? Have you tried to drive your Ferrari down the ninety one freeway at about nine o'clock in the morning on a Monday? Oh, you don't have a Ferrari? Oh, <laughs> me neither. I don't have a Ferrari. Uh, See, so you know what it's like. It's very frustrating to get into a very high performance car. Say you're a beautiful HGH molecule, and you get out on the freeway and you think it's time. I'm gonna open this thing up, get it into fifth gear. We're going 200 miles an hour, and all you see is red lights. That's glucose oversaturation. Nothing works. And the doctors have the combined aggregate system of an HA1C, uh, 
in order to say that, wait a minute, when this happens enough over time, if I started putting just a little bit of soap and water on the windows every morning, and then the next day put a little bit more, and then the next day a little bit more, eventually we wouldn't be able to see through that window. So the idea is with A1C, which I kind of like the A1C test a little more because it shows that over time, it's either we're adding to the layers of glucose surrounding all the hemoglobin cells, or what we're doing is reducing it. And we're actually starting to clean the windows and make it to where it's actually clean, to where you finally can get out there and enjoy that sports car and actually ride it down the road the way it's supposed to. Uh -huh. <laughs> yes, yeah, so the idea is you want to be healthy, you want to be fully functional and operational. And with insulin levels at such a high rate, because again, very rarely does a doctor test insulin. They test glucose. And that's a byproduct of how functional your insulin is, not how much insulin's actually in your bloodstream. To where they're adding a pill that's giving you more insulin to a party that's already full of insulin. Guys kind of know what it's like to walk into a room and go, hey, I'm going to go out on Friday night. I've got all my hair done nice. I've got all my clothes done nice. I'm ready. And you walk in and you're like, everybody's named Bill. Dang, wrong party. So the idea <laughs> is that you've got to find a way to get less insulin in your body to make it more reactive. Because insulin is amazing at what it does. But when your body is oversaturated and you just keep aggravating the situation and there's no signals going on, the hormones aren't cutting back, then this is what we call insulin resistiveness. And I'm probably going to open up on the people who do all of the actual, on uh, my next uh, Sugar Blues class, to talk about insulin resistiveness, insulin sensitivity, what it takes to get there. And then, literally, it's a four letter word. It's something everybody needs to do. But if you want balanced insulin levels, it's F A S T. Stop eating, and it will go away. For a couple days. Juice fast or tough because, again, a lot of juices add a lot of sugar. Um, it's very. Ketogenics are better. Water and oil typically work during the actual fasting phase. It's a nice cheat that we have here. Um, drinking broth, fast. Fat. Correct, to start dropping the actual sugar volumes. If you stop uh, the intake of your overall sugars through not eating for a period of time, because everything you eat in some way comes back to being sugar, except for pure protein, that means no rubs, that means no marinades, that means no sauce, that's, that's nothing on top of it, pure protein, and just pure oil. If you can keep that diet going for a couple days, do a ketogenic system, it's a sugar detox for the body, sugar starts dropping, the blood system actually has to produce enough insulin to start finding places to get sugar, but it will convert to an actual ketogenic system and burn oil for energy instead of living on sugar the whole time. Um, so, and understand that's a survival mechanism that our body knows how to do. Uh, 48 hours is amazing. Start off with just 16 though. Do it while you're sleeping. One of the best ways that I have found out there that's really, is called um, intermittent fasting. It's fantastic because all you got to do is go to sleep and then just not eat until 12 the next day. It sounds hard when people go, but I go love to go to sleep. Eight o'clock, nine o'clock. Uh huh. Don't eat till don't eat till 12 the next day. You uh -huh. might feel a little bit hungry, but the funny thing is, you'll start losing weight. You'll start getting more energy. You'll start dropping your sugar levels. Your body will start balancing itself, and that's a good start. And then eventually, a couple of weeks go by, and you're feeling good on intermittent fasting. And then all of a sudden you say, I'm going to push it. I'm going to go a day. I'm going to go 24 full hours with nothing in terms of solid food or anything sugar-containing coming in the body. But you can do... Yeah, yeah, exactly. No, nothing else. Just the proteins. Um, and that's the tough part because I know people who are so sensitive that a cough drop will put their numbers above the 200s. You know, and they people wouldn't think that, but that's that's how bad it could be. Carrots, again, carrots, the most sugar-laden vegetable, um, can drop numbers, you know, really or pu push numbers really high. Nope. 
very little. So, like, um, again, it's tough when you're a vegetarian because there's very few things in the vegetarian world that are pure protein. The only thing I would say that would actually be healthy for a vegetarian is mushrooms. Um, so at least you could do slices of portobello, however you like them, vinegar only. Or, or you're saying meat. Meats. Like chicken. Mm -hmm. Prefer something better than chicken, but, you know, if that's what you like, then the idea is, you know, stick with chicken. Buffalo is awesome right now. Oh, yeah. Fish is good as long as it's not from anywhere in the ocean. And then it's not even good when it's gone. Oh, no. Um, and it's really not good anywhere if it's from the freshwater either anymore. Uh, mm -hmm. But, no, I, and I, I would love for everybody here, um, just because I'm thinking about it when I'm saying this today, on uh, March 28th, um, Saturday, I'll be giving a talk in L.A. Um, all about um, the, we're now four, we're going close to four years post-Fukushima. Yeah. Um, and what's been happening in the last four years. It's amazing. So we'll have the stream up uh, to where you'll be able to watch if you're not at because I'll, I'll be going and giving that talk on, on Saturday. Um, so it's unique because this process of getting insulin sensitivity back in the body will help you heal in so many different ways because once insulin's finally doing what it's supposed to do, freeways aren't clogged anymore, you're able to get the packages that need to go where they need to go properly. Otherwise, everything's still going to be gummed up. Yeah, cause, cause that's, kind of, that's kind of funny because the uh, medical world out there, the uh, diabetics, you're going to you take your insulin or you have to take the pill and you've got to eat every four hours. Yep, constant. Gotta... Yep, which will just do nothing but spike the numbers. Um, again, don't get me wrong, emergency medicine is amazing, but daily control, absolutely horrendous. <laughs> Yeah. So you have yeah. Your protein and Solid lactose. Yeah. yeah. Full sugar. That's yeah. all that is. <laughs> yeah, really? Yeah. Oh yeah. Why do you think it tastes so good? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Now, if you get some really like good old aged, you know, like funky cheeses, then then a lot of times the sugar gets reduced pretty well. The harder but the cheese, the better. The harder the cheese, the better. Yeah. The longer it's the longer it's been fermenting, the better off the process is. Uh, but most people don't like those. <laughs> um, yeah, I see by the packages of straight cheese. Yeah, I have. Oh, yeah. Yeah, little baby bells and yeah. 100 gram calorie packs. I'm being healthy. Um, so it is kind of interesting. We mentioned about exogenous and, and uh, endogenous. Um, the idea is you want to make your own. You can make your own. There, It's just a process of healing to make it to where those pathways get open. Um, just like when the freeway goes under construction for a little while and then it opens back up again, things are sometimes better. Again, every time they've been doing this for some reason, I moved here in 2000. I don't know of a year where the 91 hasn't been under construction. So I don't know what they're thinking about how to solve that problem there, but it's never going to get any better. No matter how many lanes you put either direction, it's, it's, it's always going to be full. I don't know what they, you know, it's, it's interesting. It's really funny to me. Um, <laughs> so this class like I say is wonderful to kind of get an understanding to get a foundation for you to go away from this this talk today and go I think I think I got it a little bit more um, the foundations of, of hormone health are tough to find out truthfully it's why endocrinologists are probably paid uh, one of the highest paid doctoring systems that we've been able to find um, minus certain surgeons uh, and certain oncologists, but endocrinologists, it's such an interesting game that they play. Um, and it's, it's a wonderful world of medicine as well, too, because it's interesting to see what the body does um, to not only cope and heal, but what, you know, what happens whenever we see the, the, you know, the system you know, misfire. But foundation nutrition is so critical. So we go back to the five essentials. We really want to make sure those are happening. Sulfur, iodine, vitamin D, magnesium, and omegas. When you're fasting, mm -hmm. do you take the MSN? Do you take your Correct. Still to all of that, yes. All the nutritional materials. And again, even I, when I'm working with people who are new to fasting, one shake at the end of the day to make it as long as a fasting period as possible, it's not solid food. So the breakdown is very minimalized. Um, you know, it's one of those where that's, so that's a good help. Kind of Correct. Okay. 
That's that's not the way. Not the, not most, of this shelf not most of this shelf over here, which is in the sugar section, and you know some of this like fun stuff. Well, but the MSM, um, the MSM is on this side. When, yeah, it should be right here. Uh, but the idea, no, a lot of the nutritional materials. But here's that thing. I can give you a thousand ways to not really be fasting while you're trying to fast, or, like most people, just drink water and be happy. You'll be okay. Trust me. If I locked you in a box and I said you can't come out for 24 hours and I gave you two gallons of water and I said that's all you got, then the idea is you'd get through it. You'd be perfect. You may not like me after that because you know it may not be fun, but I'll try to keep some entertaining like uh, magazines and some little crossword puzzles in there. But fasting is not the end of the world. Um, again, most people would be doing this every week in their culture or religious background anyways. It's just in America, land of plenty, and we don't see the point in it. Um, so it's not built into our culture, and yet it's such an amazing part of health. Um, so give yourself as much time as you can. Uh, eating is actually what kind of contributes to aging. So if you don't want to be old, stop eating. It helps. So it's interesting how that works. And eating the right things, that's where it's very tough. People who are nutritionally poor and their body doesn't have all that foundation material, to not eat for a day, headaches and dizziness and stomach cramping and vomit, I mean, they, their whole body will freak out. If you have a good solid foundation for your minerals and for your nutrients, then your body can skip a day and it doesn't have even a blink. I mean, there's a lot of times with my schedule that I don't even think about it and I go, oh yeah, did I? I'm like... I guess I grabbed that little like protein bar right at the end of the day before I laid down. Yeah, I guess I did eat yesterday, but I won't even think about it because a day's no. I mean, it just kind of goes over. Um, what about the shake? Most of them, again, are fantastic uh, because they're building a profile. But limit yourself to one or even half. Um, again, I can give you a thousand crutches to try to get through a fast, or the idea is to set it up and understand wherever you might be. Intermittent fasting, starting there. Just, just add that to the, the profile. Can you make them sugar -free too? We can make them sugar-free, yes. Um, detoxification, uh, something that I'm doing uh, for myself during all this month. Um, it's interesting because a lot of detox packages out there, um, I, I wish I could say what I really think, um, but they just focus on flushing the body instead of actually nutrifying the body. And it's so much more important to sometimes just isolate the things that you know could be causing problems and eliminate them before you ever detox from anything because that's a detox in itself. If you know that I go to whatever fast food chain um, three times a week on my way to work or my way to this or whatever and, and I just feel like that might be a place where I'm getting some bad food in my body, cut it out. See how you feel. That's a detox. Um, again, I talk a lot about the no detox detox, where you just clean out the pantry one day, throw away all the stuff you know that you got in there because you had relatives over, or you had a party, and all the stuff that you just kind of snack on, and you know, things that you know that, that's probably not in the, my best health. Get rid of it, and then we can worry about doing heavy detoxes later. Um, you know, for now, the idea though is is to keep a generally free and clean eating value. And eventually pull all the material that you want um, away from your body by doing certain uh, cleansing protocols. Uh, and if you're interested or curious about doing anything where it's just a straight detox for a particular organ or particular need, always feel free to send me an email or give me a phone call and we can set up something that's particular for what you're looking for. And make sure that you're in the right health order for you to be able to get it done and be able to do it properly. Um, so that's where a lot of people just kind of jump into detoxing and they start drinking a bunch of green juice and then two days into it their brain can't contain all of the actual material that they've been mobilizing and they kind of shut down and they feel horrible uh, and they shouldn't do that that's not the way it should feel it should feel healthy uh-huh uh-huh well <clears throat> Christian Northrup is the what I would call one of the most amazing experts on this. Um, she focuses much more on women's health generally. Um, definitely has all of her now birthing circles and things of that nature which are amazing. But her start was really menopause. Um, and understanding that 
the process of what's happening is your body's trying to catch up on all the things that it didn't get to do during your first 50 or 60 years before it, there's any kind of change. Um, if you had no toxicities, no stress in life, no issues, then it would never happen. And there's a lot of cultures that are very anti-Western medicine, very native in their ways, that there's no name for menopause. They don't understand what that means. There's the birthing years and then there's the non-birthing years. That's, that's the only difference that they see. Um, there isn't this built-up medical profile system for, oh, you're premenopausal. Oh, you're perimenopausal. Uh-oh, you're menopausal. Oh, no, now you're postmenopausal. Oh, now you're second perimenopausal. And the lists just go on and on and on because it's a medical thing now that people feel like my body's out of control. How do I get it back into control? And the sad part is, is they kind of give you hormones that your body can't produce on itself anymore. And so it makes you kind of in the middle to where every time you're working with things, it's not there, not really working, not really doing what's supposed to, but it's enough to where you don't feel bad. Uh, again, I go back to that phrase. I love that phrase now, and I'm going to remember it from here on out. If you want change, expect to be uncomfortable um, and have it just be done. Just cycle through it and be done. Um, the things that help menopause is getting iodine back in the body, magnesium back in the body, sulfur back in the body, vitamin D back in the body. Good, yeah, D3, all those. Good proteins back in the body. Colloidal gold is actually one of the interesting and very functional uh, ways of balancing the hormones inside the system. And so that can be a very big piece in that as way too because it creates an overall um, section of change. Um, to where you can start to see the cycling. Why would the doctor say that I had three uh, low or whatever they call that? Oh, osteopenia? Yeah, osteopenia. Mm -hmm. And he wanted to do bone max. I go, no. you're crazy. <laughs> we'll kill <laughs> your skeleton. That. Yeah. Vitamin D is more critical. Yeah. Um, magnesium is more critical. And that's the other thing. The, the vitamin D is so small. Uh -huh. Five drops a day. That's it. That's it. And, uh, the silica, the silica helps the bones as well, too. Good. So we'll start that. So, uh, and again, it's always back to an acid alkaline issue as well, too, for bone health. Um, because the bones are the way that our body tries to homeostasis balance our blood alkali alkalinity. So if we need to take calcium out of the bones and put it into the blood to make it more alkaline, we will do that as long as it takes until we break a hip. Um, and that's where most people get to, is that their body is far too acid prone and therefore their body's always leaching material out of their bones um, until they get enough vitamin D to lock it up, enough silica to keep the structure strong and flexible, um, enough of the actual magnesium to allow, oh, of course, 100%. Like I say, get ready people, we're going back to living a thousand years. Imagine what it's going to be like may not happen today, may not be my lifetime, but we are understanding the medical system and we'll see how it goes. But it's one of those where the bodies are going to start taking themselves you know, over. Um, there are a lot of foods that can help make you happy. A lot of um, really good herbs that can help make you happy. Essential oils that can help make you happy. Um, homeopathics that can help make you happy. There's a lot of things you can do like running your dog, woodworking, gardening, that can make you happy. Um, so many people are so quote-unquote despondent um, with their day-to-day -day lifestyle structures that they want a drug to make them happy instead of the idea of, well, you have all of the chemicals inside your brain that you need to be happy. Dopamine is one of them. Lacuna is the best way to start allowing for dopamine to be back in the system. Um, so look at Makuna as being a great way. Like we talked about Camo Camo um, for the fact of it giving serotonin. Uh, the vitamin C levels that are in this and the actual precursors for 5-HTP to start boosting that back up. And even cinnamon, clove, hops, um, high, high level antioxidants. Um, turmeric, we call taking far too much turmeric in a day blissing on turmeric because your body is so not inflamed anymore, that it can finally feel relaxed. Um, again, the spine alignment is incredibly important. Um, finding something to do, rituals that actually help you feel happy. Um, I take 
really awesome baths on every two or three days, every night sometimes if I'm you know feeling off. The bath is the way that I tell myself, you go to sleep happy, you wake up happy. That's how this works. I've got a little bottle of water that's got salt and peppermint oil in it, and when I wake up, the first thing I do is drink that. It's refreshing. It makes me think, great to be alive. Um, because those are the ways to kind of get around the idea that you need to get material from someone else, an exogenous hormone, to change the way you feel um, when you can do it yourself. Um, so it's very critical in this process. Um, again, it's tough to go from where you are sometimes on hormone health to where you want to be. It's not going to happen overnight most often. Um, it might happen in a week if you can find that right piece. Uh, it's more likely going to be a few months. Um, it could take a couple years. Undoing menopause symptoms and syndrome um, takes a few years of getting the whole body balanced again. You've spent X amount of decades getting yourself to the point where it's not working, and then it takes time to undo that Rubik's Cube kind of puzzle to get everything back into the point to where it's a really amazing picture again. So what about hot flashes? Hot flashes, on average... <clears throat> are caused by a, a thyroid stimulating hormone over activating what's called the thymus. Um, the reason that menopausal women receive a higher dose of this is that the fluctuations are happening on an every two to three minute cycle and they're getting spiking. The thymus gland is what controls your fever symptom. So you're technically getting a mini fever. And that's why it, that's why you get the sweats. That's why your body feels then cold and clammy and weird and you just want to get out of your skin because you're like, I was fine two seconds ago. Now what's happening? Um, and it's unique because that process is, again, a very cleansing system. Just like, did we ever talk, did we ever have a conversation here about niacin? Anyone here do niacin? Oh, you guys got you guys got to go do some niacin. Um, it's just the same thing as doing niacin flushing. Um, so the whole skin, all of this, the actual pores in the body open up. You get real hot, real clammy, real weird, and all of a sudden your body just wants to just sweat everything out, which is great because it's actually very purifying. Um, and that part of the process, again, is your body trying to detox um, and help you get rid of all the material your body's been accumulating. Like I say, anybody here who's actually can, like wants to read more about this, highly recommend Christiane Northrup. Um, Christiane. So, yeah, so Christ, I-A-N-N-E. Christian. Christiane, yeah. Northrop, yeah. Fantastic woman. I love hearing her talk. She's so funny and so interesting, and the way she talks about life is so simple. Is she on YouTube? Oh, yeah, she's got YouTube. She's done books with Wayne Dwyer. She's all around. Um, yeah, no, no. And, but she just has this purity in thought of, wait a minute, you know, anything happening to you in a health realm is obviously for a reason stop stopping it because stopping it makes it worse you know that's where again if you're getting some reaction in the body try to understand it and then figure out how your body naturally controls it yep then all of a sudden it feels so much better correct and that's again some of those where it's exactly exactly you're in that realm of unknown so we really want to use classes like this and people like Christiane and, and getting functional medicine back, you know, a nutritional material back in the body to balance ourselves, to feel healthier, um, to where we can actually deal with the day-to-day -day stress. Because stress is never going to go. But the dealing of stress is your choice and your operation for your own body. So feel empowered from a class like this that if I talked about something or touched on something that happened to be focused on you particularly, I love that. There's always places to get more information. You know, feel free, like I say, call, send an email. Um, you know, my new office is actually opened up on Winchester, so I do have the ability uh, for anybody who wants to go uh, and do the health coaching uh, there. Just feel free to send me an email, let me know. Um, the, again, great way about this is that we can actually strive to be getting healthier one step at a time, one day at a time, and it's just a matter of those one steps each day that you actually see everything change. So we really want to have everybody feeling um, just amazing on this. So, yes? Do you have a flyer um, I'm, I'll put something up on my Facebook, um, and then I'll, I'll give something out at the next talk. I'll, I'll bring something that'll have the details, so that way you can actually go through that. And then I, I wanted to bring up the next one.
Brian was telling me that after making a couple of changes, mm -hmm. not that the not that the uh, you know, music board was used, but the location of that location, was yeah, and and the use of the pulling with the music equipment. Yeah, from the last day of the two. That I've started dreaming. I have a crowd. I haven't dreamt in two years. Is that what I'm wow. dreaming? I really haven't dreamt in years, and I have to mention that the valve is where she left. Uh huh. And she said since she's been doing, doing it, mm -hmm. she started dreaming, and she didn't remember doing it. Yep. Yeah. Well, the funky thing about this is there's there's two there's two parts in this. One, this is optimal health. Your brain system, even though you're sleeping, it's just for your physical system. Your brain never shuts off. So it's unique because when your brain is actually operating, everything you go to sleep with thinking that it could be a problem, a concern, an anxiety, a worry, you literally run through multiple thousand iterations of how to solve it. And usually the remembering is actually the one that goes, hey, that might work. So write down your dreams. Remember what's what's occurring there. Remember what you're going because you can control everything about it. So write down as much as possible and see what happens because the idea is when you start getting activated and everything starts happening again, um, then that's where we'll start to see you know changes in effects like that. Every time. I, I was telling her years ago uh, when I was in the Navy, I, I had a very recurring dream. It didn't happen every night, but it happened frequently. Uh huh. And it was a particular dream. Yep. That I feared, it, it, you had to know exactly what you were doing to correct the issue. I dreamt how to fix that. Uh, recurring dream, and it happened. <laughs> wow. Wow. Wonderful. I, I was the only one that ran down to which valves, valves to move. To hit. That's weird. That's, That's the way so it works. Cool. That's the way it works. I just realized they may be reactivated with my nail glands. Yep. Way, like well, the sulfur is finally, the sulfur and the magnesium is finally starting to take the calcification away. Um, you're starting to get blood flow to areas where you've never had blood flow for a while, or it's been so restrictive that that particular system inside the brain function is not working uh and and again you're you, you know starting to now work with essential oil so you'll see that even kind of go uh to another level there as well too um Gives you a good starter. Twenty bucks is cheap. Yeah. Okay. And you place your order. You call Karen, mm -hmm. the owner of the website. Yep. And you talk to her. She can substitute some of them, and she's great. And she's even sending me some sample glasses. Yep. Some little some like one them. one mil guys. Yeah. Of the whole bunch. Yeah. We, uh, she just wants people. She's same yeah. same like me. So it's just that attitude of. I want to get this in people's hands. I want them to try it out, see how it works, and see how it goes, because it's it's the keys that she has found in her in her wall. Yeah. Oh yeah. Got to get them on you though, because then yeah, everything yeah. changes as yeah. well too. Yeah. Uh huh. Put a couple of drops on it and stick it somewhere near where you're at your IV. If you're in bed, you can stick it inside your car. Yep. Um, my daughter does that with her kids. Yeah. Stick yeah. it in the vent of your car. Vent to your car. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, fantastic. Mike, like I say, I know that you're you're maybe still on there, um, you know, holding on, kind of listening to uh, bits of this. But um, like I say, if there's any question you might have had particularly that came up for you. Uh, so that's going to be uh, up with a, a group called Skywatch LA, um, and uh, it's a it's a small little gathering for them. 
it's not open to any, anybody else for attending, uh, as far as I know. But uh, I'll give you some details to where you can, like I say, to where you can at least watch what's going on, um, and uh, and then you can you can follow along. Fantastic, thank you, Mike. Any other questions? Two. Yeah, I'll put it on there. that I'm thinking is when you said that each separate thing has like a piece of paper mm -hmm. back to back. Each separate thing has its own side. Its own spot. Mm -hmm. So wouldn't there be a lot of things you could get through? And another thing that, that's hitting me is you're saying no chlorine, but I've been thrown to play swim a lot and I've been trying to leave salt water pool, but they always have chlorine in a salt water pool. Yeah. And the oh. pool man told me that there's all also chlorine in the ocean. There's some. Well, again, natural chlorine inside the ocean is yeah. very different than chlorine bleach. Um, so chlorine, yeah. Yeah, salt water helps, but again, it's just the idea of not being in a like a because typical chlorine saturation is about seven percent. Salt water pool needs about one. So you're getting a very different concentration. And again, you can use hydrogen peroxide to cleanse. You can use lots of other ways of cleaning spas and pools that have very and have minimal yeah, to no bleach. It's not my pool. I know. It's no, exactly yeah. you can you can the idea though is is to not allow for you to so to always be doing things like MSM, TMG to help pull material out of the body. And keeping your iodine up. That's the whole game. Is that if you have enough iodine, well then all the receptor sites for the iodine will be full of iodine, like they should be, instead of allowing for chlorine to come in. Well, I'm taking one drop a day, so should I take one? I would probably start yeah. doing functionally increasing it more. Yeah. I'm at 27. Oh, you're kidding. Right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. Well, it's not bad if I take three, four, five. Nope. Days. Everybody has their own particular level, and. How do you know? You'll feel flush. Your body will kind of feel like you're having a hot flash. That's another you like it, too much. Uh, if you take too much, but you'll know it actually after you're having it. So it'll be one of those within 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 ten, ten to fifteen minutes. It'll warm you. You'll feel it, or you'll get a tingling in your fingers or toes, and you'll actually start to sense that that's because that's when the thyroid's outputting as much as it can. And you don't want to be at that level all the time, so you usually drop it back one drop or so once you get there. But everybody will kind of come up to say three, four, five, and then they'll cut back to, you know, uh, uh, but I mean, keep working at it. It takes time to get there. Uh, and you have to have everything else working. Otherwise, if you have oversaturation of iodine in a blood system where the iodine's not being absorbed, then, then the body will, it'll keep it inside the blood and it'll cleanse and, and it'll help the system, but you don't want to go too high. Um, you just want the thyroid to be optimal. Stuff in the air, you know, what we have, like our chlorinated water. Correct. I don't think we could ever do too much. No. I, mean, I don't think so. Yeah. Because, so. I mean, I mean, where else are we going to bathe? But the, well, I mean, that's where it's interesting where we sell, we sell the shower filters. That, that's, do. yep, it's one of the best. Uh, usually, I usually see them. I can't see one right now. Maybe not this week. We usually carry them though. Oh, but you so have them. we usually do. Okay. And that's the best way. Like I say, I've had one of those things hooked up for my kids since they were born. And I mean, what's funny is I've never bought one for myself, but I give one to my kids. <laughs> um, every and the, you know, it's just but you know, be be just be mindful of that. Um, you know, again, it's, it's interesting that, um, yes, we're surrounded by it. The well, difference, the, the difference, the yeah, chemical all the way along. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. I know. Yeah. 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 What do you mean? Oh, and I usually have to switch to healthier products. Yeah. I used to have like a constant um, frothy, uh -huh. uh, like a, I used to smoke a, I used to smoke it, never smoked a day in my life. And when I switched to an all nutrient color, or, uh, a certified organic color, that frothiness went away. Yep. 
Because it was probably yeah, sw- it was probably swelling your thyroid. Yeah, something mm-hmm. swelling something. Because I could, I couldn't even sing, you know, like in church. Yeah. I couldn't sing because of it. And I thought, wow, you know, it's 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 a it's a called all nutrients certified organic color. Yeah. It cool. still has some bad. Have don't 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 think it doesn't have some bad stuff. It always will because you're 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 mixing it with. Yeah. Bleach, okay? With a catalyst. But that's the only way you're going to color gray. One of the things you like to have done some chemistry as well. Yeah. Okay. You, you need to have something of high concentration, something of low concentration. Mm-hmm. always migrate to the lower side. Yeah. So if you're in a lower concentrated pool, not going to have as much migrating. There's not as much right. force, force with the osmotic. You to absorb it. Yeah. When you have a larger concentration, you need to have a larger drive to, to for you to absorb it. Yep. There's, 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 there's a drive. So if you can smell it, don't get in it if you yeah, can yeah. help it. You know, that's the funny thing is, like, I like that LA fit <laughs> when I was on board submarine, well, we, well, we were at sea, mm-hmm. we only drank water, we drank seawater. That Filtered. Distilled. Yeah. Okay. One of my jobs was... Distilling. Yeah, you know, one of my things was, was to distill the water to talk to her about this thing. And, and then we would further purify it down to our yep. needs. Yep. Okay. But I came home from one six-month operation. I remember coming to Florida saying, I'm not going to drink this thing for a while. Because we shut down the steam plant. So when I came in, came home one year, I remember this was the steam I went home, planked in the shower, so I could do it all. I lived in how much water we had. I went home and used the shower for, a, you know, just a, I have to stay under hot water for a while. And I smelled myself. I smelt the chlorine on yeah. myself. Wow. Oh, yeah. For a long time. Yep. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because I've been chlorine, chlorine mostly free. chlorine free. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah. So, very welcome. <laughs> um, did you go to Guardians of Eden? I saw it. Okay. I just, like I said, as soon as I see a warning, I'm saying, sucker. You know, you ever, there, you ever seen the Cape Buffalo? Yeah. Okay, if you look at them head on, they always look like they're smiling. They have a running nose, but they always look like they're smiling. You know why? They're saying, come closer. Come close. I don't want to run that far. Yeah. <laughs> But no, their warning is the fact of anybody selling adulterated material. That's their big warning. Guardians, yep. Uh huh. That's the big one for the menopause. The electrochemical upgrade, so your actual circuit board and mother tree, motherboard system starts actually processing. Mm-hmm. Everything else is actually falling in suit.